Hi everyone, welcome to my third episode of On My Studio Table. I hope you enjoy this episode. I have been absolutely thrilled with the feedback from episodes one and two, and you have been so encouraging and supportive of what I've shared with you, and it's really given me the incentive to keep going with this. It's quite a new thing for me to do this. I know I've had a YouTube channel for a number of years, but probably until last year it was a bit underutilized and uh, since I started doing the on my studio table episodes I have been just astonished at the reception my number of subscribers has gone up drastically and the number of views on my videos also and I, I'm just very very appreciative of that thank you very much I'm going to be developing things as I go along I'm still learning of course and um, I'm enjoying the journey. So I hope you enjoy it with me. First of all, I just wanted to show you a few things um, that have just come up. One of them is a book that I received yesterday. I haven't even looked at it yet. And it's called The Modern Natural Dyer. And I'm really looking forward to having a look at this. Yeah, it's quite amazing that um, somebody who knows me well could give me a book not only that I haven't seen before but one that I don't own <laughs> because I do own quite a few. It's actually by Christine Vejar, V-E-J-A-R and I'm not sure uh, whether you know of her, I hadn't heard of her before but I'm certainly going to study this book and uh, I'm looking forward to that and to experimenting with some of the ideas in it. So I'll just hold it up again so you can see the cover just the cover itself is enough to make you want to dive into it. Another thing that I have on my studio table at the moment looks like something that might be just rubbish. But those of you who know me know that I love to use things that people would consider to be rubbish and make them into something. Often it would be part of an artwork or it could be part of something to wear, um, could be part of a book or a journal. Who knows? So what I've been doing is I've been saving all my threads and offcuts from my recent projects. So this is the pile of threads and offcuts left from my 52 week project that I'm doing with K3N Cloth Tails, which I've mentioned in episode one in quite a bit of detail. So if you'd like to have a look at that, please uh, feel free to go and open that video and view it. And these are mostly neutral colors. Then I started to move on to a few other things while still keeping that going because it's 52 weeks after all. And also my rice bag scraps, which you would have seen also. But this is the second pile. So it's both of them are threads and bits of fabric, bits of yarn, um, sometimes the pulled threads from the edges of fabrics that um, when they fray, they fall off or need to be pulled off. This has more colour in it, so this has got greens and pink and uh, still some neutrals as well, but a bit more dominant in colour. And you can see if I hold them up together, the contrast between them. And I have in mind something that I would like to try, which I've been experimenting with off and on since last year. In my YouTube playlist, you will find um, one that I did about needle felting and I experimented with needle felting an art piece, a textile art piece or mixed media piece using um, mainly fabrics and some yarns and threads but you can also needle felt randomly uh, different threads and scraps along a piece of fabric and then allow that to show you how it should develop. So what I'm planning to do is to make a background with those offcuts and scraps onto a piece of fabric, probably wool and probably naturally dyed or printed wool. And then I'll see what eventuates. Now I may add machine or hand stitching or both, maybe applique, who knows? I'm just going to let it um, evolve as I go along. Last time I also asked you for your opinion on what sort of closure I should use on the scroll that I've just recently finished. And I decided to go with the naturally dyed tape, which I did with tea. I had a strip of silk as well that was frayed, and that was initially my uh, preference, 
but when I thought about it and tried it and, sh and asked a few other friends off video what they thought, including my husband, who was also a friend, um, they seemed to think that the tea dyed vintage tape was probably a good option. So that's what I've done and I've closed it with this lovely vintage lingerie pen which I talked about also. So um, I'm still planning to reveal some of these scrolls to you. I have five that I'd like to reveal to you and they will be done in separate videos. Probably not part of the On My Studio Table series but as separate entities. I also have on my table two little booklets which I made or covered. This is one that I actually made from scratch using my eco printed papers. That's the back. And it's just held together with a simple pamphlet stitch. I made a series of these but I decided to keep this one for myself. Inside you can see that it's paper that I've dipped in dye and a bit of um, corrugated cardboard or actually one layer of corrugated cardboard and then I've just written in them my daily thoughts. Often I'm sitting outside in the mornings while I'm having a cup of tea before everybody else is up and mostly they're in the form of poems which I think I have already mentioned and in my 52 week project I'm actually using um, some of these words uh, to go with the weekly project and it's a great way to just put down my thoughts. Um, just sometimes, you know, you have some days where you have a bit of a struggle. Some days things are going well. And sometimes it's just observations about what I see. And it's often about birds, the sounds that I hear. And from time to time, I possibly will read you some of them as well. Um, if you would like me to do that, please say so in the comments. I would love to know what you think. This is another one. This one is full and the other one is nearly full. And I made a cover for an existing journal for this one. So you notice that I do like old key. So there's an old key on there. All naturally dyed fabrics, including, including bits of lace and doilies, um, a piece of wool for the background. And I've just made pockets on the sides to slide the book in, which I also did on my 52-week journal, just on the back. And this goes back to, let me see, 2020. So um, it's going over a bit of a period of time. And then the small one I just showed you followed on from that. And then I've started another one for which I've made a pouch instead of a cover. And I showed you that in the first episode as well. And some of the things are quite ordinary, you know, uh, for example, steam rises from my cup, cloudy with a chance of rain. And I guess that's a kind of a haiku format. So, yes, so if you think I that you would be interested, let me know and I'll read you some of the things that I've done over the series of videos into the future. The next thing I'd like to uh, show you is some necklaces that I've been making. I have been learning how to make cloth twine and the cloth twine on this necklace is made according to instructions from K3N Cloth Tales in one of her videos. And initially, I think I mentioned earlier, I didn't think I would want to learn how to do this. But now I think it's a great way to use up scraps of cloth and yarn and so on. And this necklace I actually wore for a very special celebration on Sunday. And I'll share some photos of this. If you're on my Facebook page, you'll see that I've already shared this. The uh, beads um, were inspired by a video by Marion of Marion's World. And they're all hand stitched, made out of scraps of silk and cotton and linen. And the filling is actually recycled felted jumper scraps. I use them for all sorts of things. Some I dye and eco print, some I just cut up and use as backgrounds for things. And in this case, this, they were the filling. So I highly recommend that you check out Marion's World and her video about making fabric beads. And of course, because I have so many scraps, I had to make another one. 
I only had one of these, which is a piece of carved shell, so I had to think about what else I could put on a necklace. And I just finished one last night, so I'll just get that and show it to you. Um, I've made a few more beads for this one. So instead of having three on each side, I've actually got four on each side, which makes it a bit more uh, detailed. And I had some wooden rings, which I've had for a very long time, which I attached to the bottom in the same way I did the carved shell pendant. And the wooden beads for both of them come from my stash of beads, which I've had also for quite a long time, and I dip into every now and again when I need them. And it's really fun to actually um, think of different ways to stitch the beads. And I've tended to use a limited number of thread colours. I've used green, pink and yellow and variations of that. Some of the threads are variegated, some are not. <clears throat> so the first one I mentioned I wore for a special occasion. I had a big birthday last week and I thought I wanted to wear something that I made for my birthday celebration on Sunday, which was a few days after the actual day. We were having a celebration here at home with family and friends. And as it turned out, we had about 50 people. And being autumn here in Tasmania, you're never sure what the weather's going to be like. We have big verandas and a, a lovely open space around the house because we're in the country. And luckily the weather was perfect and people could just spill outside and we had a great time. My husband and I are also musicians and we wanted to have some music, a bit of a music jam afterwards, which we did with other friends who are also musicians. And it was just a wonderful time. But I wore this um, as part of my birthday outfit. I just wore it with black because I didn't think I really needed to do much else to set this off. I will probably be making some of these available in my online shop. So uh, just keep checking at gonerustic.com if you're interested and I'll do some more over the next week or so. It's quite an enjoyable process. So um, I just thought uh, those might be a few things that you would be interested in. I also um, wanted to show you something that I made a very long time ago and which I'm wearing. This is a copper pendant which I made when it was about 19 and I designed it on paper first and then it was cut out of copper and a copper plate put on the back of it. I learned how to do this in um, a class that was part of my education degree. I majored in art when I was younger and part of the art was to have guest tutors and we had a wonderful Norwegian uh, jewellery maker come and teach us for a semester. And so I made this pendant and I also made a ring, which I have sadly lost over the years. But the pendant also got lost at one point. I had worn it when I had a doctor's appointment, took it off, forgot to put it back on. And then for a couple of years, no one knew where it was. And then I had another doctor's appointment and I noticed it was hanging on the doorknob of his cupboard. And I asked him, where did that come from? Because it was mine and I'd been looking for it and I had made it. And he said, somebody found it underneath a piece of furniture. So it must have fallen off, gone under a piece of furniture, and the cleaners may not have been as thorough as they should have been. And anyway, two years later, someone found it. So I got it back, so I feel very, very happy about that. And I've been wearing it quite a lot. So it's based on a flower, a stylized flower, and uh, it's just on a piece of leather thonging. The other thing I'm wearing is this ring. And it's something that I bought just recently to treat myself from a local shop where two artists have set up and one of them does poured art. So she makes these wonderful designs with poured paint, large paintings as well as smaller things like this ring. And what I liked about this one is it has some metallic paints in it and it is an adjustable ring. So I bought it and it goes really well with my copper pendant. So I'm really happy about that. And just to finish, I just wanted to share with you, because this birthday was quite a significant birthday, and I should probably say what it was, it was my 70th birthday. I've been working most of my life, and in the last 20 odd years, doing what I particularly love, which is making art, teaching art, 
and just um, encouraging other artists as well with exhibitions and selling my art too through uh, my gallery shop in St Mary's in northeastern Tasmania. And since we moved into this house, we have had uh, plans to develop the business uh, a bit further and possibly in a slightly different direction. And I have hinted about this online a couple of times. And what I would like to do ultimately is to run small retreats, mini retreats, and have time spent with people that want to work with me doing natural dyeing and printing, possibly things like intuitive stitching as well, and making paint from the earth itself. These are things that I've already taught either online or at my business or at home. And I would like to develop that further building on my teaching experience over many years. And um, as things unfold, I will share more with you about that. But I know the feedback has been very positive from my VIP group and other members of my online groups that this could be something that people would be interested in. I already teach one-on-one -on -one workshops at home by appointment on Saturdays. And if you're interested in that, you can go to my gonerustic.com online shop and go to the events section and there you will see one-on-one -on -one workshops. And once you've paid for your workshop, we can negotiate a date and I will send you the materials list. So I think that's all I wanted to talk about today. As I keep learning about how to use YouTube, you may find that it gets slightly more professional, but I want to keep it real. I'm just an ordinary person doing art to the best of her ability. I love doing it and I want to share that with you. And I love being part of the arts community on a wider basis than what I would find in my own local community. And we are really a global community and I think that's a wonderful thing that the internet has done. So I hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to hit the like button and also to subscribe. And thank you again so much for all your support. See you next time.